Now I invite Dr. Uh, Gabriel Ajeni. He is an orthopedic surgeon from UK, but uh, he has a very vast experience and interest in uh, nutritional aspect of rejuvenation. His YouTube channel has 2 million followers and he, each, he, his, each video has uh, like 50,000 to million followers. So we are lucky to have him with us. Dr. Ajani, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Hi. Yeah. So he'll be to, uh, talking today about how to like clinical strategy to avoid glycation and insulin resistance. Hi, everybody. Uh, first, I would like to thank Dr. Kumar for the invitation. It's a, it's a pleasure to be with you here in this important meeting for regenerative medicine. I will just share my screen now. Just a minute, please. Can you see my screen? You can see, yes. Yeah. So the subject today that we will talk about is let me decrease this. So we will talk about clinical strategy to avoid glycation and insulin resistance. This is a subject that is many times forgotten by the regenerative medicine. And I believe that it can greatly affect our treatment outcome. So uh, this is Mylard, uh, Dr. Camille Mylard, that was the one that described the Mylard reaction. The Mylard reaction is when you take some protein and add to sugar in presence of heat, and it forms the uh, advanced glycation, glycation end products. This end product is good for the, the industry of food, but it, it also occurs in our body. When you have, we have glucose with the proteins our, for our body, body cells and heat for the body, we start for this advanced glycation end products. And the problem is that these end products start to accumulate in different tissues of our body our eyes, the blood vessels, and uh, as well in bones and cartilage. And this advanced glycation and products are linked to many diseases like diabetes, aging, atherosclerosis, this, and so on. We have to keep in mind that the skin cell has the skin tissue has a turnover of 28 days. So in 28 days, one month, we have all the, the new cells in our skin, uh, while in cartilage tissue, we have the turnover uh, of many and many years. So uh, the accumulation of this advanced glycation and products in our cartilage can be a bigger problem than the accumulation in the skins. And it decreases uh, the production of some substance of the cartilage matrix like proteoglycans and cause changes in the structure of uh, our hyaline cartilage. So uh, there are many studies uh, linking the presence of advanced glycation and the products to osteoarthritis and it uh, acts decreasing or, of course, uh, increasing the stiffness of the articular cartilage, uh, causing it to uh, decrease the absorption of impacts uh, leading to degradation uh, with time. We published this study in 2020 and showing the, the link between uh, glucose and metabolic syndrome with the subcondyl bone. And today, we know that the subcondyl bone is really important for the physiopathology of osteoarthritis. And in the picture B, we can see that uh, red shows the uh, good quality bone. It's a tibial plateau from cadavers without metabolic syndrome. And in picture J, we can see that in a presence of hypertension, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome, we don't have so 
uh, a good quality bone. And this subchondral bone has changed in the trabecular structure, and this structure uh, decreased the capacity to absorb impact as well, and increase the uh, start to overload the cartilage of our joints, leading to degeneration. <laughs> We should notice as well that the advanced glycation and products can uh, increase the cross link between uh, collagen uh, fibers in our tendons, and it decreases the uh, fiber sliding, leading to tendon tendinopathies and disease of the tendon. In the environment of the arthritic joint, we have uh, inflammatory cytokines, different kinds of cells, and especially we have to give special attention to the macrophages. In an inflammatory joint, we have especially macrophage type 1 that are inflammatory and increase catabolism. And we should try to transform this macrophage type 1, macrophage type 2, that is a macrophage that decreases inflammation, stimulates the healing of the tissues. But the problem is that uh, in the advanced glycation and products, dif uh, difficult this transformation from the macrophage type 1 to macrophage type 2. So we keep uh, longer in this inflammatory process, which, which is number two of the, the stage of wine healing. So we can't go to the uh, later uh, stage of wine healing, like remodeling, that needs this macrophage type to, to start the healing of the cartilage, if it's a, a, a tear in an articular cartilage. So uh, really important to decrease the, the presence of this advanced glycation and products. Another uh, problem that sometimes we, we don't pay attention to our patients is insulin resistance. Insulin is, is really important to open the, the, the cells to, to glucose, to use glucose I, as a, our uh, main fuel. So if you, we have insulin resistance, we have this many uh, problems that you already know, gain fatty, decrease energy production, but in our joints, with, we need insulin because insulin decreases the release of inflammatory cytokines like TNF, alpha, and when you have this uh, insulin resistance, we increase the production and the release of TNF, alpha, that leads to uh, synovial thickening, and uh, increase the macrophage type 1 that causes a, a vicious circle of inflammatory in our joints leading to degeneration. So uh, what's the potential cause of insulin resistance? The diet, uh, a bad diet, inflammatory diet, inflammation, chronic inflammation, uh, inactivity, and the uh, dysbiosis, the gut microbiota is really important for uh, to avoid insulin resistance. It's this uh, website you can enter to check the, uh, the in, uh, HOMA, HOMA IR, which is an index that shows the insulin resistance. We can type the glucose, insulin, and show the, the resistance of the body to this important hormone that's called uh, insulin. And uh, a good HOMA IR, IR uh, should be lesser than one. And when you have a, a level more than one, we should try to end this problem with the patient, decrease insulin resistance. And what we can do is to change the diet, stimulate exercise, uh, improve the quality of the sleep, use some, of course, medications and supplements that we will talk quickly today. This is Dr. Jean Signalet. He was a professor of the University of Montpellier in France, and he creates a anti-inflammatory diet. He talked during, during his life, he talked about this inflammatory, the anti-inflammatory diet, and one of the most inflammatory foods that we can take is sugar, and we have 
to pay attention, especially to the liquid sugars. That is the sugar that is is inside the sodas, the, the juices, and many uh, uh, packings that we give sometimes to, to our children. So we have to pay attention to the quantity of the sugar in these, these foods. Another important thing uh, that we have to do in the anti-inflammatory diet is to decrease the presence of uh, advanced glycation in the products. So we should avoid food uh, produced in high heat environments. So fried foods create a lot of advanced glycation and the products. So it will increase inflammation because of this process of accumulation of age inside the, the cartilage and bones. We can use a lot of glycation inhibitors uh, like supplements and medication. And it's important to uh, see the acetyl salicylic acid is really important to avoid this glycation of hemoglobin. And we can use uh, just to prevent, uh, not just to prevent a, a stroke, uh, a heart attack, but as well to prevent the hemoglobin glycation. Uh, another substance that we use a lot is metformin, uh, one of the drugs that uh, we use really often to, to treat diabetes. And it's important be because it decreases the production of advanced glycation and products and help us uh, deal with this patient that needs our regenerative treatment. Inositol is a, a vitamin from B complex that can be used to decrease insulin resistance it's a molecule quite close to the molecule of glucose, but it's uh, different from glucose. It decreases insulin resistance. So we can use the inositol in, in diet to decrease uh, this process. Another amino acid that we can use is arginine. Arginine shows uh, important uh, capacity to decrease insulin resistance. So we can check in diet with our nutritionists, if the, the patient eats a good quantities of proteins and if the, uh, he doesn't need, we can increase the consumption of arginine and other amino acids in, this, in his diet. Thiamine is vitamin B1, is really important as well to the uh, control of the glucose to avoid insulin resistance. And so the, the vitamins of the B complex, not just thiamine, which is B1, but uh, B12, B9, folic acid, cyanocobalamin are uh, really important to avoid this glycation and degeneration for processing our joints. Another substance that is, has a, a lot of studies is the substance called allicin that is found in garlic and some studies shows that it can decrease the production of ages by 6 56 percent so uh, we should uh, use this uh, garlic in the diet and also we can uh, increase the the uh, the quantity of allicin as a supplement as well glutathione is one of the most powerful antioxidants that our bo body can produce. And we should keep in mind that after the age of 20, we will start to decrease the production of glutathione in our body. So we need this substance to control the insulin levels, to uh, stimulate the, the metabolism of glucose, and we can use direct glut glutathione or we can use some precursors of glutathione like NEC, NSST, cysteine, that can be uh, transformed in glutathione in our body. Important to note that glutathione as a supplement is really difficult to be absorbed. So sometimes we need uh, liposomal forms of glutathione that can be easily absorbed by, by our body or, and we use a lot in Brazil, in the ortho region group, glutathione intravenous. So we can uh, uh, put drips of glutathione to increase the uh, 
oxidant capacity of our patients. This is one of the reviews that we published in our group about the role of glutathione in osteoarthritis. And we can see that glutathione can be used to decrease, reduce the cartilage degradation in osteoarthritic joints. Another important uh, substance supplement that we can use to decrease inflammation is CoQ10. Coenzyme Q10 is really important because our body produces it, but after 30 years, we start to decrease CoQ10. And especially when many of our patients, they use uh, drugs like statin, drugs to decrease cholesterol, triglycerides, and these drugs cause a huge decrease in the levels of CoQ10. And CoQ10 is not uh, a, a coenzyme linked to the production of energy inside the mitochondria, but is as well a uh, relevant anti-inflammatory in our body. So if you increase the, the consumption of CoQ10, we can decrease inflammation and it helps decrease insulin resistance. Another supplement that I use a lot in my practical clinic is berberine. Berberine not only decreases the NF kappa beta, which is a, a, a process that increases inflammation, the release of uh, inflammatory cytokines like TNF-alpha, interleukine Cs, and so on. But it also helps to regulate uh, intestinal mic microbiota. So it helps uh, increase the number of bacteria like Ackermansia mucinifera, Pecolobacteria prausnitzi, bacteria that produce butyrate in our guts, and this butyrate is absorbed by our gut and decreases inflammation, help regulates the tight junctions of our intestines and decrease le uh, leak gut syndrome. That is a problem that increases inflammatory inflammation in our body. So it's up here from me. Another substance that can help a lot is quercetin. Quercetin is a substance from the cl class, class of senolytic supplements. Senolytic is the, a kind of supplement that can kill or stimulate the killing of senescent cells. Senescent cells are old cells that are forgotten by our immune system and should be killed to uh, give place for new cells and these cells is, are called zombie cells because they uh, don't have function, but they release a lot of inflammatory cytokines and increase the inflammation in our body, inflammation in our joint, and uh, increase, of course, the degeneration of the articular cartilage. So it's really important to do some measures in our regenerative medicine patient. It's important to ask before the treatment for the levels of blood glucose, uh, insulin, basal insulin, which is the insulin uh, measured in the morning, the hemoglobin A1C, which is the, the quantity, the percentage of hemoglobin that it was glycated by the levels of glucose, and also the index, the HOMA index, which is the index that shows the insulin resistance. So I think if we control the levels of glucose and glucose metabolism, we can help a lot and increase the quality of our treatment. And in our practice, practice we use a lot anti-inflammatory diet. We stimulate the exercise. Of course, if the patient has uh, osteoarthritis. We try to uh, avoid impact exercise, stimulate uh, resistance training, cycle, cycling, but of course, this exercise decreases the number of inflammatory cytokines and simulates uh, joint regeneration. We have to pay attention of the, for the sleep quality and try to increase the sleep quality because we know that uh, a lot of recovery uh, occurs during the night and we can use, of course, supplement to decrease inflammation and promote health in our patients. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you, Dr. Jaini. Your talk are always uh, very interesting. And I think it's not just for the patient. I think we should also incorporate in our lifestyle and our daily routine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, if there is any question uh, from the panelist. So uh, let me ask one question for you. Like in your daily routine uh, diet, like what changes you have done and what is your recommendation like? I think one of the best changes that we can do today is to avoid carbohydrates in the morning. Why? Because it, it, it changes dramatically the insulin resistance in our body. Because during the night, we have low levels of glucose because, we are, of course, we are not eating. And if you can keep this insulin level low during a, a part of our day, it will help decrease insulin resistance. So if you, you avoid just carbohydrates in the morning, you can eat like eggs or uh, some fruit uh, with lower index of carbohydrates like avocado. And you can uh, stay with, uh, you can be with this insulin level low during more time until midday, until your lunch time. I think it's a, a good tax to decrease insulin resistance and it, it will help in your metabolism, increase the, the lipolysis, the, the uh, breakage of uh, fat cells to produce energy. And of course, it will help in our, our general health. Okay. So uh, thank you, Dr. Azini, for your excellent talk. Uh, I think, let me see from, uh, does uh, glycation product, AG, has some role in polycystic ovary disease in women? Yes. Uh, the, the age is totally linked to polycystic ovarian syndrome. And we know that a, a woman with polycystic ovarian syndrome usually has insulin resistance. So uh, we have to uh, tackle this problem, decrease the insulin resistance with diet. I have a lot of patients with this disease and we start with nutrition, uh, change the diet. Sometimes you need uh, to start a, a very low carb diet, like a ketogenic diet, and we can see a, a decrease in the symptoms of polycystic ovarian syndrome, and as well in the, the size of the cysts. Uh, thanks again. So.